I know you like it when I open the programme by confiding in you. There's a daily wrestle between the personal and the political on this programme. I I, I appreciate that I need you to use yourself as a lens through which to view the story. I think your perspective on any given episode is much more interesting if you have a personal investment in it or uh, skin in the game is that slightly unpleasant figure of speech that we sometimes use, isn't it? Especially if we're talking about stuff like, oh, I don't know, universal credit or labour shortages or or COVID or pretty much, well, no, not pretty much anything because sometimes a, a frank exchange of opinions can be rather invigorating, can't it? But I I do think the personal is political and it is more interesting for the rest of us listening when the person speaking has a personal investment in or personal experience of the story under discussion. So where does the wrestling come in? Well, I don't think either of us, either you or me, would particularly enjoy me talking... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> exclusively about myself every day. Um, I, I, I've had, I probably would have resignations from my own team by uh, half past ten if I were to do that. But some days I, I think it's probably the right decision to talk about stuff that's happened to me in the context of stuff that's happened to other people. And today is one of those days for a whole heap of reasons, would you believe. Uh, partly and initially, as we will begin with, the harassing of Michael Gove yesterday by so-called anti-vax protesters who, from where I am sitting, seem to be part of the same group, or mindset at least, as the uh, the bunch that had a crack at me a couple of months ago, I told you about it, and accused me of deliberately shielding satanic paedophiles. Now, don't laugh. Or at least if you are laughing, because, I mean, it is quite a gigglesome accusation. But you know and I know, particularly given the events of last Friday, that people believing, actually, I, I, I suppose we should hold off on, on drawing any conclusions from that, but we, we know that from terror attacks in the past, people believing stuff that is, to the rest of us, close to bonkers doesn't prevent them from doing unspeakable things. So, yeah, it's pretty funny, uh, at least 10 minutes after the event, it's pretty funny to be accused of shielding satanic paedophiles and being in cahoots with Bill Gates as part of some enormous global conspiracy. But if someone really, really believes that, then who knows what they will do? And that, I think you'll agree, is the point at which it it stops being funny. Now, I can tell you from personal experience that it starts being funny again in, in the retelling particularly some of the detail that I'll share with you shortly. But that one thought there is crucial and important. Right there. People will do unspeakable things because they believe unbelievable stuff, right? That's one of the elements of conversation that we're going to be having today. I would also... I'm working on a new little phrase to sum up something important. I I think this is absolutely crucial given the weird weight being placed on so-called anonymous online abuse in the wake of Sir David Amos's death. And I I, just in case you're wondering, I use the word death to describe what happened on Friday for for, for, for legal reasons and reasons of, uh, I hope, obvious concern. I can't quite believe the way it's gone. You've got newspaper columnists now writing about how awful it is being abused in public life. If, if you follow my Twitter account, you'll see that one of them, um, who is relevant to this story today, because she's the estranged wife of Michael Gove, but she was hauled over the coals not long ago by Michael Portillo, another, of course, prominent conservative, and Alan Johnson for writing unconscionably abusive stuff about Justine Miliband, whose offence was to do nothing but be married to the then leader of the opposition. So I am not comfortable with the way that people who are paid for their toxic opinions are now joining forces to condemn people who are not paid for their toxic opinions, or be that they're offered anonymously. And again, the personal perspective is, part of me would quite like the idea of all anonymous uh, trolls online being removed and banned, but the bigger part of me recognises that that is too high a price to pay for the democratic check and balance that it offers. But that's, that's, 
a conversation that A, we've already had, and B, that we'll have another day. So Sarah Vine is the Daily Mail columnist, writing very powerfully about how horrible it is to be exposed to these sort of abuses. And, of course, writing about her estranged husband being accosted in the street, but not mentioning, for example, the un- unparalleled toxicity of the Mail Online's own comment section. In fact, all newspaper comment sections, and yes, radio stations' comment sections and Facebook pages as well, are, (laughs) you know, the responsibility in the case of a newspaper online section, that's the responsibility of the newspaper, not the responsibility of Facebook or Twitter. So don't let them pull the wool over your eyes, and please remember this at all times. Describing what someone has done is not abuse. You can see why people want it to be abuse, but describing what Jacob Rees-Mogg said about the people who died in Grenfell Tower is not abuse, it's reporting. Describing what Dominic Raab is trying to do with the law or what he said about the Dover to Calais crossing um, is not abuse, it's reporting. Describing Priti Patel's attitude to uh, refugees at risk of drowning in the, in the sea is not abuse, it is reporting. Describing Boris Johnson's life is not abuse, it is reporting. It might look like abuse, but it's, report, it's reporting. If it looks like abuse, that's the fault of the person that's undertaken the behaviour, not the fault of the person that's reporting it. Describing Jeremy Corbyn's associations with profoundly unsavoury individuals and ideas over pretty much his entire career is not abuse, or a hatchet job, or a smear campaign. It is reporting. So I have a feeling that you and I together are going to have to navigate these very choppy seas and, and, the, and the brick bats, the slings and arrows of outrageous accusation that will come flying at us will be accusations built upon the idea that describing what somebody has done is somehow adding to the bonfire of abuse that public figures are exposed to. But I hope you know by now you can trust me to keep a, a firm hand on the tiller and, and a clear eye on the seas in front, because I will not be taking lessons from any of these people on what is and what is not acceptable conduct in public life. Uh, In fact, there's another association with Michael Gove uh, that is relevant to to my perspective on this story that I will share with you in the course of this hour as well. Uh, I mean, frankly, astonishing that somebody who works so closely with him can engage in the sort of behaviour directed at me and, uh, and go completely unsanctioned and unpunished by the party. But Again, I I shall share that with you later because, well, have a listen. You might have missed it. You can see it on the LBC website. And I I suppose the first accusation I have to field here is um, that, yeah, I I guess I'm about to examine the, uh, what's it called, the the, the commoditization of this sort of footage, which I think is one of the reasons why they do it. And obviously I'm now sending you to our website, but this is reporting. That, again, is the difference. We are reporting what these people did. We're not doing it ourselves in the hope of clicks and ad hits or however that world works. But I I, I want you to have a look at it if you can. If you can't, you'll have to rely upon the audio and and you'll have to remember, of course, that pictures are better on the radio. And then I will add to your understanding of what happened to Michael Gove on Whitehall yesterday by telling you what happened to me a couple of months ago. So here is the audio footage which accompanies video footage on the lbc.co.uk website of uh, and and I do think that the events of last Friday are relevant to this conversation but this is what happened to the community secretary on a public street in Westminster yesterday And you you picked up, I think, at the end there, the protecting pedos accusation, which is what my my ears prick up, because that is what I was accused of um, a couple of months ago. And I want to work out 
what is going on. And it strikes me that there are three questions here. The first is, what do these people believe? And I think, as ever on this program, we're going to have to do that with one degree of separation. So you have a brother or a, or, or a, or a mother or a son who, who believes in, in this. What is it? A combination of the whole of coronavirus is a hoax. And some people will be on one or two of these buses, but not be on all three of them. So coronavirus is a hoax. The vaccine has a hidden nefarious purpose, okay, 03456060973. And then thirdly, the the satanic stroke paedophile conspiracy that underlies the first two claims. Now, if you find the satanic paedophile conspiracy ridiculous, but you're on board with the coronavirus is a hoax or the vaccines hide a hidden nefarious purpose, you are massively part of the problem. I'm sorry. Don't kid yourselves. How have you ended up on that bus with the satanic paedophile bunch is the question you should be asking yourself. So how, how I mean, what is going on? I, I, oh, three, four, five, six, oh, six, oh, nine, seven, three. Um, from the inside, what are the actual beliefs? I still don't think we've done enough on this. How, how do these beliefs take hold? 03456060973. And a question that may or may not be the most important of all. What's the business model? I remember the first time one of little Tommy Ten Names' goons accosted me in public and, and, and stuck a, a camera phone in my face. And the bit I didn't understand was why they stick the camera phone in the face. I understand that now. And again, if you know nothing of this world, then for once, I, I am quite a reliable guide through it. But I only know some of the routes. I have no idea how the <laughs> territory got built in the first place. So let's begin with that, OK? 03456060973. What do these people actually believe? OK? And how do they end up believing it? I, I, I'm not now much closer to understanding the answers to those two questions than I was when we first asked variations of them close to 18 months ago. Not so much the vaccine angle, that's come a little later, but they're all linked. We started off laughing at people who were setting fire to phone masts. And I do not know, and we may never know, how relevant these people are to the fact that in this country the vaccine rollout has stalled to a frightening degree and the booster scheme is in dire need of, forgive me, a major boost. So what do they believe? How do they end up believing it? 03456060973. And, well, I, I, I will move on to the question of, of what, why do they do this? Because I think you will smile at this last comment before we go to the break. When I was accused of, of shielding satanic paedophiles in the context of the coronavirus crisis, the question I put to the, to the person um, accusing and indeed filming me the question I put to them was, surely your time would be better used tracking down the satanic paedophiles than one of Britain's best-loved broadcasters stroke an annoying gob on a stick. And, and you can see on his face, and he wasn't an unpleasant person, although he was engaged in unpleasant behaviour, you could see on his face a, a penny begin to drop. Yeah, if there's really a satanic paedophile conspiracy out there, pal, why, why are you wasting your time on me today? Or indeed on Michael Gove. So... I mean, Michael Gove couldn't have done that yesterday because the police piled in and there were too many of them. But you see what I mean? I, I, I don't understand how they can sustain the belief in such bonkers things for so long. And I really want to. I might well be wasting my time and yours. But I think some days you have to try. Just to drive home that point about my worries, my confusion about why Conservative MPs in particular are going after online anonymous trolls. Um, I, I, the last person to libel me online was a Conservative MP called Angela Richardson, who accused me of going onto a dying child's fundraising page to, quote, making a sarky comment and not donating. Uh, she subsequently issued a humiliating public apology, but then unfortunately, two nights ago, um, returned to Twitter uh, uh, late at night, I don't know whether that was relevant, to boast about uh, her libel of me. She, she has now deleted that tweet and indeed blocked me. I mention this not just because she's a Conservative MP engaging in libelous online abuse without any sanction or punishment from her party at all, but she's described on her own Twitter page as the PPS, the Parliamentary Private Secretary to Michael Gove.
Amazing, right? 22 after 10 is the time. Drew's in Brent. Drew, what can you tell me? Um, hi, James. How are you doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm all good. What's um, on your mind? Yeah, so basically, you know, one thing that I have noticed, um, you know, these, these stories about, um, you know, weird sort of VIP, um, you know, ritualistic paedophilia stuff, as far as I'm aware, these stories have been around since the dawn of time. You know, I'm 36 years old. I remember hearing about these stories, you know, before YouTube. And, but you know, how does it tie world. into coronavirus? So I, 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 I don't, how, don't make how, me how I keep reminding you of what happened to me. But, but when I am accused yeah, no. of covering up for satanic paedophiles, as Michael Gove was yesterday, what are we supposed to be doing? I mean, how, if you don't know, you don't know. That's fine. But have, you, you, I've got I, a lot of calls have, waiting, and, and and basically, basically, yeah. I have I have um, a lot of friends, um, you know, that uh, are sort of posting and spouting a lot of this yeah. conspiracy stuff before coronavirus, um, and during the lockdown and stuff, I noticed you know an increase in people that weren't necessarily. I don't know, sort of like regurgitating it or sort of into it. But during the lockdown, you know, the people being stuck inside their house and, you know, I don't know, down to boredom or whatever. So you don't, I, I mean, don't, no offence, but you've got, you've, you've got no more clue than I have. I've seen it all as well, but how they end up there, apart from being bored, you're not going to win any prizes for that, Drew. Sorry, but yeah, you, you no, don't know I, either. I, 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 I get you, I get you. It's, that's um, all right, mate, don't worry. But yeah, I'm going to crack on in the hope of finding someone that does, if that's all right with you. Go for it. All right, no. take care. And do call me again. But the, the bar's quite high today because, uh, A, this is, could be linked to the decline in the rollout and the um, worries about the vaccination rates. And, B, you know, one of these people might do something awful. And <laughs> if we're looking the other way or still finding it funny... I think we'll find it a little bit difficult to, to, to live with ourselves. 24 minutes after 10 is the time. Damien is in Bradford. Damien, what's going on? Hi, how are you doing? You well? Yeah, thank you. Carry on. Um, so I just think that where people get their information from is very different now. Well, it's not you information, know, so like, is it? I mean, I'm being a bit well, pedantic no, there, but whether the things, the, the, what they think, <laughs> they think it's information, but it's not information. Yeah, they, they, think, they think it's information, and I don't think they're able to distinguish the difference. So... You know, once upon a time, we had to research things. You know, we had to, if we wanted to learn about a particular topic, we would go to the library or we would read white papers or we would, you know, we'd educate ourselves on that topic. And now we get our information from, you know, great Auntie Jane on Facebook. Well, you know yeah, I mean? and then, I mean, you know, the pot kettle for me to, to pick up on anybody doing that, although I don't accuse Auntie Doris of doing anything anymore. But it's more sinister than that. <laughs> These people that are on the street jumping up and down, they're in a sort of... Uh, ecosystem, aren't they? A, a symbiotic or a parasitic ecosystem constantly feeding off each other. We may be wasting our time because you're either in it or you're not in it and nobody really can describe what it's like being in it if they're not in it. But how, where does the satanic paedophile conspiracy come in? Well, what is supposed to be happening? Because when QAnon was on the march in America, and remember, Donald Trump is still popular among Republicans and still uncondemned by many senior Republican politicians and, and a large swathe of his base believes that children's blood was being harvested to provide transfusions to people like Bill Gates and Hillary Clinton. And I, I guess either you believe that or you think it's so bonkers it's not worth talking about. And that's the problem. I don't know how we bridge those two communities, those two constituencies. I think it really... I, I, I think if you are susceptible to conspiracy theories in general, then I, I'm fairly sure that the same people that think that the vaccine has some onerous um, kind of undertone, if there's some, some other kind of like something else going on, are probably the same people that believe that it, we've, we've been flying UFOs for years, you know, and the same Maybe. people that think that we've got the satanic cults. I just think some people are more susceptible to... Um, you know, to conspiracy theories in general. And yeah, I think you're right. I think, I think they get caught up in their own echo chamber where if you look online for something, you can find anything to validate any opinion, can't you? And then if your friends are doing the same thing and you end up in this kind of bubble where you don't allow... We need people who've been in it, don't we? You, me, Andrew. We, we really need people who've been in it to take us to the other side. So, you see, I, and now I resist the... And I've been indulging it myself a lot over the years not just with this crisis this conspiracy but i think we need to resist the sort of stereotyping i was in pret manger the other day damien just to enforce my own stereotype i was in pret manger uh, enjoying a sandwich and there were two women sitting next to me who i uh, couldn't help but hear they were having quite a loud conversation and they were what you would describe as almost school mums middle class school yeah. mums right 
and I didn't know what their base subject matter was. They were discussing the logistics, and they were saying, well, if we go that way, then you'll be able to get your train home, so why don't we do that? And they were clearly dropping off leaflets or doing something, and, and I thought maybe it's for the charity or the school tombola or something like that and i'm minding my own business as i as i as i do as i go about my business in central london and as i leave one of them turns to me and she hands me this leaflet and she says oh you should talk about this on your show by the way and i don't know how relevant it is that she was smartly dressed and well spoken and looked and sounded exactly like the kind of mum i would have met at the school gates back in my girls primary schools days and she hands me this leaflet and i take her off her and it's all about how um uh, uh, the, the coronavirus is uh, being used to controllers and what you really need is that horse dewormer whose name i think now everybody knows and it was quite professionally produced and it was it was quite a jarring moment even for someone who does this for a living and so I, that's not coming from weird dark corners of the internet that's coming from places that these people trust or think are normal and that's the bit we don't get right what would you do if someone yeah, handed no. you? What, someone hands you that leaflet, you do what I do. You fold it back up, you hand it back, and you say, try not to kill anybody on your way home today. But what, what do they, why, do they, why do they see it differently? That's the bit I don't get. What is the, the chink in the armour of their normality that allows this abnormality to take hold? Um, I, I mean, first off, I mean, we're not talking about dark corners of the internet. You know, no. We're talking about Facebook and Twitter. Yeah, you know, good, and point. This is, good point. And, and, and the thing is, I mean, we, you know... The democratic nature of the internet has enabled everybody to a have an opinion and b spread that opinion far and wide, and you know that will get caught up with memes that are very shareable, and all of a sudden, like your 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 opinion has spread to you know thousands and, and hundreds the, of thousands. And the and the speed the speed with which the DIY stuff has started to look like the professional stuff, and again, one of the problems here yeah. is is yeah. that the so-called professionals are often part of the problem, not the solution. But it looks as real as a newspaper website or a broadcaster's website. Sure. It's on Facebook. It's under possibly beginning with Breitbart and the nonsense that they spouted but propelled Donald Trump into parlor, into, into the White House. It, it looks like, nor, quotes normal media, and therefore people's critical faculties get turned off a bit. Mm. I think there's... Um, I, I know this seems like a strange comparison, but look at, uh, look, at, look at something like Squid Game, right? Yeah. So... Yeah, the second I, I person that said that to me in this context. I was having this conversation <laughs> at home last night, and one of my girls brought up Squid Game as an example. I haven't watched it well, yet. No spoilers. Well, I've, I've, never, I've, I've never seen an ad for Squid Game. I've, it's never come up on my Netflix, ever. But yeah. I knew that everyone was watching Squid Game, and I had to watch it. There must was, be something in it. There must be it. something in it. So, so I think the same thing happens with these conspiracy theories. I, I, think go, I mean, that's what viral means in a, in a non-medical context. Sure. It's gone viral, and, and therefore people think that, well, even if I can't understand it, I must, there must be something in it. Thank you, mate. And, and thank you to Drew as well, who I was a little impatient with, but I, I, as you can tell, I've got the bit between my teeth today. Not least because, as I will keep reminding you, just because what they believe strikes almost all of us as completely out there doesn't mean it will stop them doing something unthinkable. And, and that's why perhaps, and you may disagree, and if you do disagree, ring me and talk to me about why, it seems to me to be important to try to come to a better understanding of, of the, the why, the what, and the wherefore. Here's another challenge for you, okay? Um, give me a, a, a thumbnail sketch of what they believe. And I appreciate they're not all going to be marching under the same banner, but if you combine coronavirus is a hoax, the vaccines are up to no good, part of the hoax, and protecting paedophiles, which was also shouted at, at Michael Gove yesterday in in, um, in Westminster. G can you give me a, a, a two, three sentence description of what they actually believe? Can they give you a two to three sentence description of what they actually believe? I, I do not know. Um, but I am keen for you to try. 10.36 is the time. Tim's in Leeds. Tim, what can you tell me? Hi, James. Um, so I'm a, a nurse in intensive care. I've I worked, remember. Um, yeah, I've, I've worked mostly through um, the pandemic in, in, in ICU, in, in COVID land, as we call it. Um, <laughs> and I've had quite a lot of, a significant amount of abuse hurled at me online for being part of something. Oh, online? Conspiracy. No. Online and okay. in person. What happens yeah, in person? So, I don't know whether the distinction is as stark as, I, as someone of my age thinks it is but I, I'm, I'm immediately so, more interested in what's happened in person i was quite surprised at how aggressive it was actually so i yeah. was actually um in league city centers a few weeks ago and there was an anti-vax rally 
um, going on. Um, and they, they all looked absolutely bonkers, if I'm totally honest. Yeah. But um, I went up and I actually challenged one of them that right. came over because they saw me laughing at them and they came over. And um, one of them proceeded to throw me one big massive punch straight really? into the chest. Really? Um, in front of police and then, right. and then ran off. Um, so that, that was quite remarkable. But I've, I've actually had one of my best friends um, who just ended up down this ridiculous anti-vax rabbit hole, um, challenging everything that the NHS was saying, cha- challenging what, what, lockdown, challenging all What, what did he believe was going on? Do you know? No, no problem if you don't know. To this day, I still don't, because the problem is that every time you try and challenge people like that on any sort of idea or any sort of sentence or fact that they try and come up with, they will very quickly move on to something else. Yeah. They don't do challenging. So every time I tried to speak to him about things and, and talk him, talk some sense into him, he just went off on another tangent. Right. Um, and and I, I think the time that I realized I'd completely lost him was when he said, it's ICU, it's what happens anyway, people die. Yeah. And, and so as if saying no that you, you waste your every working minute trying to keep people alive is a complete waste of time and, and even perhaps part of some grand conspiracy? Yeah, so he, again, he was he suggested very highly that I was part of the problem and that I was going down this um, rabbit hole of, of, of the NHS being fraudulent. Um, and I and the, the, the thing is, the really upsetting thing is, there's absolutely nothing that I can do about it. Because you can challenge people so many times. Are we wasting our time so today? Uh, are we wasting yeah, our time today? I wonder, no, I don't think you're wasting your time because I think you need to talk about it. And I think right. there's a genuine worry. And the worry that I had was hit with him was things that he was sharing on his social media. Thankfully, I'm smart enough and our other friends are smart enough that they don't pay him the blindest bit of attention. Yeah. But the problem is that if one person does pay him attention, it's too many people. And they, and, and and they, 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 the turn, they turn your... Dismissal, dismissal and derision, uh, and I stress again, after doing your best to help, they turn it into a badge of honour. So I've seen people boasting about losing friends. I've seen people boasting about being alienated by their own family as if that proves the, uh, the, the power of their crusade, the power of their cause. It has an element of martyrdom to it, doesn't it, eventually? So the fact that you have cast him out is is his sort of biblical moment of vindication because it proves that you're part of the problem. You can't it, it handle the truth, it. as it were. It completely fuels it, and he, he feels like he will be that, that one last lone soldier who is right, and he just fuels it. Interestingly enough, and I know this has been in the news affair, but, but we've had them in intensive care. I'm not gonna, obviously not going to give any, way, any details of where I work, but we've had them that literally right before they've been put on a ventilator, they are still denying it. I, and and, and that, that probably should reach a wider difficult. audience. I, I remember speaking, and everyone who was listening will remember speaking to a doctor who had a... And, and we asked him to keep in touch, and he hasn't been back in touch. I don't think it's our place to, to, to chase him up, but he had a, a pregnant mum unvaccinated in exactly the situation you describe, and I know he feared, he feared the worst, and yet these stories tend to get pushed out of the media by conversations about how well to quote the times today boris johnson says that coronavirus is under control <clears throat> and ministers are adamant that there is no need to change course despite the highest number of daily deaths since march it's a it's a funny one tim take care thank you for everything that you do rest assured obviously that the massive majority of people to whose help you may one day gallop are nothing but appreciative of everything you do speaking of politicians and coronavirus this is interesting from the new york times a brazilian congressional panel is set to recommend mass homicide charges against president jair bolsonaro asserting that he intentionally let the coronavirus rip through the country and kill hundreds of thousands in a failed bid to achieve herd immunity and revive latin america's largest economy a report from the congressional panel's investigation excerpts from which were viewed by the new york times ahead of its scheduled release this week, also recommends criminal charges against 69 other people, including three of Mr Bolsonaro's sons and numerous current and former government officials. Very, very early on in this, there was a speech given by the UK Prime Minister talking about how one country or some countries may actually be able to turn the crisis to economic benefit. I'll just leave you with that thought and, and, and read out again a failed bid to achieve herd immunity and revive Latin America's largest economy. And back to the British media, Boris Johnson says that coronavirus is under control. 
10.41 is the time. Wayne is in Basildon. Now, regular listeners will know that I know Wayne. They may not know that Wayne is a friend of Sir David Amos's family and so dealing with a, a personal investment with the events of last Friday. But it is looking forward, my friend, now that, that your own, shall we say, experiences in the rabbit hole maybe have helped to the rest of us. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Um, because what, what you're trying to do here is explain religion um, to people that are logical thinkers. And the problem with uh, trying to explain that is you're trying to explain emotion with logic and you can't do that. You, they're never, never the twain shall meet. Because you kind of can. I mean, you, you, you know I'll have a crack. But the, the, yeah, the, the, well, religion at its base, and I, 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 I still am a religious person in some context myself, is yeah. you, 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 you think that there must be a higher power. Yeah, there, that, there, just leave there, it there. there. No, okay. there, there, there must be an order. There must be a reason. Yeah, okay. And, and other people are saying to you, this is the reason. Now, okay. regardless of what um, religion you, um, you, you... What's the word I'm looking for? Follow. Follow, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so whatever religion That's you follow... That's why they pay me the big bucks, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well done. There's another bonus for you. Um, whatever religion you follow, you will not have any other one interjecting on yours you'll just go no mine's right mine's right mine's right and that is exactly what you're getting with anti-vaxxers um conspiracy theorists anything that you give them that will be um oh, so, so i could write so this is in fact it, that's why tim was saying as soon as you offer up a a rational objection they'll yeah. move on to something else like and, in, in, and, and it will strengthen the the resolve that they're right and you're wrong because we're talking about faith not comprehension Exactly. That's exactly what I'm saying. That's why it is the same as religion. And the whole thing about it is they're like, oh, they see someone else that believes in that particular religion. Oh, you're my friend. You're my friend. You're my friend. We spoke about this before when we were talking about um, Islamic is- extremists. Yeah. And I, and I said to you, um, if you was in Australia and you saw someone wearing a Kidderminster Harrier shirt, you would go, Hello, you're mate. A kiddie fan. Hello, you're mate. A kid- What's up? All right. Yeah, I <laughs> exactly. would. Of course, I would. But, but that bug could be a complete muppet. Well, un- unlikely in the case of Kid and Mr. Harris, but I take your broad point. <laughs> no, but, but I'm, I'm using that as a, a simplification. Yeah. As, as, yeah. Uh, as to what's so that, going so, on. so okay. So here's the thing. Let's say, speaking as a Catholic, I, I, I believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. I, I, I don't necessarily believe, well, I don't believe that the Old Testament is literal, but I can give you a fairly compelling account of what I believe. You can yeah. come back to me and tell me why that is based entirely on faith. So we still don't know what these people believe. It's, no, it's, it's, it's exactly the same, because you could have... Um, oh, so they just say, I believe coronavirus is a hoax, that Bill Gates is trying to inject me with secret yeah. microchips, and that it's all being done to protect a massive satanic paedophile ring. And the yeah, question and then, the question about where does that come from is, is moot. It's pointless. Yeah, because you could have Neil deGrasse Tyson come along, who is the most world-renowned astrophysicist, give you chapter and verse on why religion is silly. Yeah. And, and I, I will go, still have beliefs, personally. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That. But that's the way I was raised. That goes right back to the crib, the cradle with me. This stuff doesn't, does it? Some people have, 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 have in the last 18 months, some people have, to coin a phrase, Wayne, some people have lost the plot. Yeah. I so mean, it doesn't but, go but, back but, to child. What's no, what? no, but the thing is, the thing is, there are, there are certain things that we instill in our children that are safe, as in certain beliefs and characters, I'm not going to say them too much because okay, I don't want to. Sure. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, but I certain season, seasonal characters. <laughs> yeah. No. Okay. Um, and we we tell those to our kids, and they believe them to a point. But then when they get to a certain point of enlightenment, they go, "Dad, are you having a laugh? <laughs> I, I I just see you putting that money under my pillow." <laughs> I uh, yeah, 20p in your case probably the uh, <laughs> no, it's a fiver. inflation mate oh my god um, think, uh, it's still uh, not I a waste think... of our time though having and, and we've had these conversations on air and off air it's still not a waste yeah. of time trying to work out because you it's, you ended up not, down not, I can't remember which rabbit yeah. hole you ended up down but oh, it, no, I was I was down uh, the Alex Jones right the, right, the Infowars um, stuff which was ab- yeah. I mean absolutely and you are a you know a sensible a sensible chat. That's the point I was trying to make to the earlier caller. It can almost happen to anyone. So yeah. don't don't answer this if I'm prying. What do you think it was about you? Because I don't think I would fall for this. Do you know, do you know what? What? It was um, 
going back to people like Noam Chomsky, yeah, um, using critical thinking, using um, the ability to dissect information and see what is true and what do you believe, that making that distinction, what is true and what do you believe, okay, and then kind of coming out of it that way because I was I was all in, I was all like, yeah. 1776 and all this stuff like you know good job you discovered this show isn't it what um no, uh, there you go. yeah right well um <laughs> the, the the i was trying to get that final question in before the break the the, the yeah. well i know i'll ask the obvious one what bright no, no i won't ask that one because that's self-aggrandizing but, no come on yeah here you go you thought you were cleverer than everyone else didn't you no no oh. no what no, no, better no. informed it's, in on in, no, in you know something that they don't, but then you see someone else who's in part in that same gang. And that made you feel you, special? Yeah. At a exactly time when that. you weren't feeling that special in other areas of life, or would that be unfair? Um, no, I've always been special. <laughs> but, <laughs> and on that bombshell, I'll see you soon, mate. Stay safe. It is a strange question, but I think we can all, most all agree, an important one. Paul's in Bedford. He says, I used to be a truther. I recovered my sanity. So watching these people now is quite weird and increasingly frightening. There's a narrative very much pushed through to the masses with QAnon and Trumpism that the world is not what it appears to be. The alternative reality is that the world is run by dark, satanic, secret societies that control all the media, politics and financial systems. These secret societies use Hollywood to promote paedophilia, liberalism, communism, etc. There is a serious swing into the far right happening, masked by the new truth. I'm even in a telegram group where Princess Diana, who apparently isn't dead, posts support for Donald Trump, right? Snigger, snigger. There are 50,000 people in that group. Stop sniggering. Thank you, Paul. That's helpful, but chilling. Mike's in Northampton. Mike, what can you tell us? Hi, yeah. Um, Hello, mate. Pretty much um, new caller, first-time caller. Welcome. Um, I've only been listening to your show for about six months, to be okay. fair. Um, and I think one, one of the reasons why um, I'm in a place I am to talk to you today is because of your show. Okay. Um, so pretty much I'm, I would say I'm 89% out of the rabbit hole, as one may say. <laughs> 89%. I love the specifics. It's, 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 it's so hard to get out of this rabbit hole that I know I've been in for at least the last two years. Go on. Um, and it's, it's, it's interesting. Um, so I think personally, uh, I was talking to the, the lady earlier, yes. um, a lot of it, was to start with, I think, when, when Trump first came into power. Right. Um, so I never followed politics, never did, never touched it. Sure. Um, and then uh, Trump got in, and then I kind of started following him. And then I became, I would say, very far right. Gosh. Uh, very far right, to the point where it caused a lot of friction between my, me and my friends, uh, me and my partner, um, and... So and and then of course with what happened with coronavirus, um, we started getting a lot more information, and then the so Q&R. you were in the, the groups that you were in online. We're talking about, I presume. Right? Yeah. So so there's there's other. And media. we got we, we we can't shy away from this. I mean, when when you say far right, you you were persuaded that foreign people were. Yeah, yeah, danger, I, dangerous, I, stroke, disgusting, or or, or whatever. Um, but I, I, I'm I'm not that. That that far right, but okay. it was like the whole Black Lives Matter is, is not a good movement. Okay, um, and you know, it, and, you and, know and, and and there'll be people listening to this who nod in agreement with that, who've never gone further than you. But that's the point about the rabbit hole, isn't it? The entry point yeah. might be relevant, re- relatively innocuous, or relatively uncontroversial. Might be something you've heard a presenter say on your radio station, or it might be something that you've read in a newspaper. But that's the entry point, and it's what happens hey. next that we don't fully understand. But you uh, uh, you do. And exactly. So, so you, you start peeking down it, uh, and then you start talking to people, and then they're sending you, I would say, either very broken clips. Yes. Um, looking at that time, it didn't feel like this was broken clips because you are uh, tunnel vision. Okay. Um, and pretty much, okay, look at this video, or look at this video, or and it, it got to a point where I, I was, I was deeply, deeply down the rabbit hole of. I weren't taking my vaccine. Um, I'll put my hands up now. I yes. still haven't had my vaccine. Okay, but we're um, at 89% of the way there, right? I, I, I would say probably. I okay. have, I have, Over the last two, three weeks, I have thought about booking in and starting the process. Okay. Um, because uh, it's got to a point where 
it was so it was affecting mine and my partner's relationship. Of course, okay. um, because um, me, my wife's had the vaccine. I've, I've very much said it's her decision; she can do what she wants. Yeah. Um, but it was very much um, it started to cause a lot of conflict, and it got to a point where I've got to make this decision of trying to climb out of this rabbit hole or lose my partner. And at the end of the day, my partner's more important to me. Well, I'm very relieved to hear that. I'm sure she is as well. What, what, uh, uh, in, in a sentence, what was it? In, in a sentence or two, what did you or do you believe about the vaccine that people you love find very hard to credit? So, like I said, when, when you start yeah. delving down, it is very much uh, this is a whole conspiracy to either. Um, Depopulate the um, the community. Okay. Uh, do you mean the white? Think... Do you mean the white community, or just the population? No, in no, general? no, no, no. Just, just, just population. So they in want general. to reduce the population of the planet, which means that they tell you the vaccine is good for you, but it's actually going to kill you. Or yeah, okay. um, and fair enough. It, it's it that's, a, that, that's, a, that's seductive, man. That's an intoxicating yeah. brew. I, I, I can yeah. see how people fall for that. Well, and, and, and my wife, my wife was very much, uh, and she's she's right in telling what she says. That what I'm looking down or what I was watching is it's become a cult. Yes. It has been a cult, and and, and I, I will hopefully honestly say I felt like I was in a cult. Yes, um, you were. I, I, yeah, you know, I'm, I'll quite happily say yeah. that. Um, I've got a, I've got a family member who is still very much down the rabbit hole. Okay, um, and to a point where if I didn't stop. He's at that point now where it is affecting his relationship yeah. to a point where even he's... He's, he's going to make the wrong decision. Yeah, exactly. And um, it, it's scary to see. Uh, well, it of course really it is. is scary and that, that is part of your wake-up call by the sounds of yeah. it. Did, did you stretch, Mike, to the satanic paedophile stuff? Can you tell, tell us how that uh, bit works? Yeah, yeah, I, I believe it was all it was all connected. So pretty much the the it starts with the Jeffrey Epstein Island. Yeah. Um. They, and then they start pushing the flight manifest. Then right. of course they go the flight manifest. All these people are Tom uh, Tom Hanks is on there. Yeah. Um, Bill uh, Bill Gates is on there, and then they go okay, and then and what they do is they start joining dots that. Are probably not even dots that are all connected. Oh, yeah. so, so, so you leap from the possibility that this famous person once went to this place to yeah. to the they're harvesting the blood of kidnapped children to 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 give themselves elixirs yeah. of youth. So, so, so the 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 cra- I think the the craziest yeah, the, the point where it was like it was the the Clintons were drinking. So, so the reason is this. I don't want to sound nice. No. So. The, the paedophile ring yeah. is to uh, collect the blood to keep people young. Yeah. So pretty much the apparently the Clintons were going to these islands to drink the blood of these young children to keep themselves young. And I, at, at that point, it was like, I was kind of like, okay, maybe this makes sense. But then now looking back at it, I go... What the hell? Yeah, and, and 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 the problem I've got, and this is why your call is so valuable to me, thank you, and to lots and lots of other people as well, is that my mind automatically starts thinking things like, well, I think you'll find Bill Clinton is in hospital at the moment, so that's not going very well, is it? And if this is true, and if this has been going on for a long time, where are all the eternally young people? And, and, and Yeah, and that's what I'm saying. You get tunnel vision, and, and, and you look at some of the, the higher-end celebs that have the money that have died young, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Would would, would theoretically be in that same ring. Well, you if, think if, so. if it was something that would be true. Um, and it's. Uh, but I the minute you back. start thinking about that, it's almost as if your own drawbridge comes, your own portcullis comes down. You think, well, that's a bit uncomfortable. I, I quite like the comfort of this rabbit hole. I'm not going to think about that anymore. I'm going to go down another bit. I'm going to find another video. I'm going to go somewhere else. And, and that's it. It right. is just a spiral. And it is a, it's a long fall. It just feels like Alice in Wonderland. How long did it take, down. roughly? I mean, Trump was elected in what, 20, 2016? <laughs> Yeah, so I'd probably say the first two years I probably weren't following. Like I said, I was interested. Not too closely. And then, and then literally, I, I would say... Was it the Black Lives Matter thing that kicked it off for you, do you think? I, I think that's when I, I started becoming a lot more far right. And, and, and fair to enough. be fair, it, it, was, it was not... Yeah, uh, my, my, and it, it, this might sound really... My, 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 my half-sister, or yeah. my, she's not actually my sister, my, my, my parents are uh, fostered her. Yeah. Uh, she's from Nigeria. Right. 
And then it was getting to a point where like, I can't be following this when right. my, my, my sister's um, <laughs> from that sort of heritage. So. Yeah. I mm. think you're great. Thank you. No, I really do. I, I, I think that is one of the most um, important calls I've ever taken on the programme. And, I, and I, 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 I salute your courage, actually, I think is the word I, I'd use. But then on a serious note, he was like, I knew I needed something to change. And I had somebody who was not, he was centre left. Yeah. And he suggested me to listen to yourself and um, your Blimey. show. So pretty much I'm a lorry driver. And I, I'd probably say a good six hours of my day is listening to your show. Thank and you. And I think that's helped me. I'd probably say I'm still a little bit right. But well, I that's fine. No, right. I can live with that. What, what, what can we do now for that last 11%? Anything or should we just keep plugging away? I just plug away. Um, just keep doing what you're doing, seriously. Um, and I think probably by Christmas I will, I will probably out of it and, and, and book it in. <laughs> thank you, so Mike. Thank you. Take it easy, mate. Drive, drive carefully, won't you? Yeah, uh, and, and obviously we'll be we'll be talking about other areas of your life um, sooner rather than later when it comes to the continuing problems in the haulage industry and, and the labour shortages that started there, but of course spread to, to many other places. Thank you, Mike. Uh, and thank you, everybody who's listened to this programme o- over the years and helped me become the kind of presenter that can help someone like him instead of ripping his head off for, for clicks and giggles, which I think perhaps I, I would have been once. We'll stay with this, I think, after Mike's call for what I hope are obvious reasons, awful lot of people in similar positions, which is, um, it's good to know. It, it, it feels like, you know, it is worth having these conversations, very much worth having these conversations when you speak to someone like Mike. Um, other news, I'm slightly troubled by Quasi Quartang's face. This morning, the, the, the worries that he seems to have unexpressed as he defends the government's refusal really at this point to do anything to address the increasing coronavirus infection rate, increasing hospitalisation rate, increasing death rate. The daily rate's down a bit today. It's back down to, I think, 43,000 from 49 yesterday, but still in comparison with any comparable countries or, or many comparable countries, it's still really, really worryingly high. I mentioned to you the possibility of legal action being taken against the Brazilian leader. I I can tell you Brazil is the latest country to overtake Britain, to overtake the UK um, on the percentage of population who have received at least one dose measure, which is the one that's of 6 p.m. yesterday. That's the one the Times publishes every day. It's the one I always refer to. I'd had to take a decision a few months ago to keep referring to that rather than move on to other other ones because that's the one I've been referring to previously. So that, that, you know, Brazil looking at prosecution <laughs> prosecution of their political leaders, and, and yet they have now overtaken us, our political leaders. And what Kwasi Kwarteng was saying this morning, but he was saying it with his mouth, not his eyes, I would suggest to you. That's why I say I was worried by his face. Saying with his mouth, not his eyes, that it's working, the plan is working, and we are learning to live with it. Unless, of course, you're dying with it. He did not add. So that, that's also the news. I was planning on moving on to that, but we may keep that on hold until tomorrow because this conversation about how... I think Mike has helped us understand how someone who is normal, and I really do mean that word, someone normal can end up believing stuff that the rest of us find utterly unbelievable. And, I mean, this is his entry point, and I know a lot of you listening still to me, uh, often through gritted teeth, uh, won't like this, but... Offering up abuse of the Black Lives Matter movement was his entry point. And I'm afraid that's not confined to the dark corners of the internet. That's why I worry about this response to Sir David Amos's death being, oh, we've got to clamp, clamp down on online trolls. Mike started off, he first poked his head into that rabbit hole as a, as a result of stuff that is said by people like the Home Secretary. And that pause there was deliberate. You, you've heard people. On your radio, you've read people in your newspaper attacking the Black Lives Matter movement, confecting the nonsense that it is some sort of Marxist conspiracy. Even the Queen lets it be known that she is supportive of their aims, supportive of their beliefs. And all the normally uh, flag-saluting columnists and commentators in the country all suddenly have to look the other way. Look, over there, it's a squirrel. It's weird, isn't it? But there you go. So sometimes when I try to convey to you why I'm worried about something and you think that I'm uh, uh, possibly losing it a bit or, or, or exaggerating, there it is. You, you tell lies like that, whether you realise they're lies or not, you're responsible, at least in part, for what happens next. Eight minutes after 11 is the time. Emily's in Tunbridge Wells. Emily, what can you tell us? Hi, I would class myself as a reformed conspiracy theorist. Um, <laughs> They're the best probably, type. They're the best type, aren't they? <laughs> well, well, you might not agree with me. So there's oh. still some things that I do. I oh, do okay. kind of so recovering I am, then. 
Well, here's the thing. Here's yeah. the point I want to make, that Please. the government has lied yes. and they continue to lie. And I think that we can all agree on that. Like, we can look at Boris Johnson's response to the pandemic and see massive lies and massive mistakes. But I think... One of the things, the thing that got me into but that's not a conspiracy. Thinking, I, I, sorry well, to interrupt, and I will give you the full floor in a minute. But but Boris Johnson saying things that turn out not to be true is not a conspiracy. It's provable. Totally, yeah. and this is this is the point, the larger point that I want to make. That okay. it starts with a distrust of the government because the government do lie. We okay. know that they don't tell the truth. And one of the things that really got me into this, I'm not going 9-11 truth, or I really am not one of those conspiracy okay. theories, is it's the war in Iraq, right? So that yes. was one of the big things that led me down into a distrust of the government. So the weapons of um, mass destruction line, Yes, that kind of thing. Yeah, and I think that, that's that, reasonable. That, and that became a huge thing for a lot of conspiracy yeah. theorists. And then you start looking online and you find other people that don't trust the government. And then you find people like Alex Jones. And he propagates a very right-wing libertarian worldview. And he emphasizes... But that, you can make of, that again. I'm, I'm not being pedantic, but that, that doesn't sound bad. Right-wing libertarian. I mean, you could get a column right. in The Spectator if you're a right-wing libertarian. I think Farage appeared on Alex Jones's show, didn't he? Totally. Right. Totally. But he also but he... puts it out there that the Sandy Hook school massacre was a hoax undertaken by actors exactly. and all the parents who go on television to describe the murder of their children are liars. Exactly. And that is, that's part of the thing, that you get sucked into this rabbit hole where you find people like Alex Jones, who is, who is saying, like, don't trust the government. I'm this kind of guy that's just, you know, 1776. I believe in freedom. What's 1776 also, again? Just remind me, because Wayne mentioned that as well. What is that? The American independence. But why, so this what, idea of you know the the constitution was was created and this idea of like freedom. Oh, I this see. Idea of, so like, you appeal and you're claiming that the constitution is being betrayed or being abandoned. Yes, Got exactly. Okay. But alongside that, he also interweaves, and him and other people like him. Was it? He was your groomer, was he, Emily? Most most well, mostly back, back about ten years yeah. ago. Okay. Yeah, but okay. he also. He also interweaves this religious ideology into what he says. So he believes that there's dark forces that control the world, i.e. a shadow government, right? The cabal, whatever you want to call it. Okay. And he believes, and many others like him, that they are satanic in nature. So he's got a lot of films where he goes to Bohemian Grove and he accuses them of having child sacrificing ceremonies, which they're not doing. It's literally just a play. But then that links in with things like Jeffrey Epstein, right? So you've got... You've got a real life case of Jeffrey Epstein. You've got politicians. So there's like always Donald a little Trump. nugget of plausibility. But Donald yes. Trump and Jeffrey Epstein were like really good mates. So how does that? Yes, how does exactly. Trump end up being the enemy of these movements? Exactly, exactly. Because but it but it confirms this belief that the people in control, right. i.e. the government, aren't to be trusted. So then, if the government aren't to be trusted, if the government starts saying you need to get a vaccine. It's not about, you know, like actually protecting yourself and the people around you. But the doctors you. are saying get a vaccine. Yeah, but they're all part of it as well. That's the, that's the ideology. It's, it's not just the it's government. Like a, it's like it's one of those idea. childhood nightmares when you think you've reached yeah, a place of safety and it turns out that your mum is in on it as well. <laughs> Exactly, but it's the shadowy elite. So the face mask isn't something that's going to protect you from transmitting the virus. It's a face muzzle. The vaccine isn't about protecting you and other people. It's about the population. And Bill Gates reaffirms this belief to everybody that believes this. Every time yeah. he talks about how the planet's population needs to be reduced, that is just a confirmation to the people that believe it. But he's so obviously talk, talking they, about infant mortality rates and trying to have... I mean, a, yeah, a, a they, safer they, planet, they, not they, get not get rid of people who are already here, but just reduce the birth rates exactly, in countries where life is hard to what sustain. They what they pick what they want from it. Wow, have you? Well, I mean, what what when did things? Because with Mike, when, when did things begin to unravel for you? Then when did you begin to? step out of the, these belief systems? I think when I realised how toxic it is, I was only really like in, I, you know, I still am very sceptical. You're, you're only a weekend, you're only a weekend conspiracy theorist. Yeah. <laughs> but I class myself as somebody that just likes to ask questions, right? Okay. So I think that asking questions and, and, you know, being aware of the world around you and being sceptical is a good thing, but you also need yeah. to have common sense. Well, you've got to decide realize... who you trust, I think, and that, that, that is what is at the heart of your call and of, of Mike's. It, it, do, do you trust, in your case, the Infowars bloke? Or do you trust 
you know, the governor of the Bank of England or do you trust the, the, the head of the Royal Society or do you trust your doctor or your nurse? And that, that's, totally. th- that's the headiness of the brew, isn't it? Is that they manage, because they're obviously gifted, these people. In, Absolutely, you know, they're, they're snake oil salesmen. Yes. That's they, what they are. But they're really good another, snake oil salesmen. So it, it, it can sound like a way, dismissive description. They're brilliant at selling snake oil, well, but it's still snake oil. Well, that's true. But there's another way that they're getting people now through the QAnon stuff is through New Age ideology. So it's like the intersection of the New Age spirituality stuff. And then it will lead you down this pipeline where you go. And it goes all the way back to the Nazis when they were involved in in conspiracy theories, when they were looking for Atlantis. It's this like New Age stuff. And it you you go into it. It's intoxicating and it doesn't feel it doesn't feel evil at first. Exactly. It's all. It's all the things. And then, what like are they in it for? The higher you go up the pyramid, the the. And I probably shouldn't have said pyramid. That'll add to some sort of <laughs> occultish conspiracy theory. But the higher you go up the chain of command, if you manage to get right to the top of it, they're making money. Well, exactly. And it's all. That's all. That's what a lot of it comes down to. But for the people that get, like, I got a. Fr- I have a friend who got really sucked into this, and she was originally really into tarot cards. Yeah. And it went from tarot to QAnon. To Hillary Clinton has murdered a child, and there's a video of it, but nobody can find it. You know, that's. And, that's and is how there is there a, is there a spell breaker? Is there something that I mean, you know, that's how I. I, I I'm the, always looking for the for the catalyst for the penny drop moment, but I haven't found it yet. This might be a controversial opinion, but Go I on. believe that when you deplatform people like Alex Jones, i.e., you take him off YouTube, and I hate the guy, right? Mm. I genuinely hate him. But when you de-platform him and take him off YouTube, you're basically taking... You're, not only are you reinforcing all of these people's beliefs, but you are also pushing them onto InfoWars.com instead of YouTube. Even matter places. They, even even matter... Un- I, I disagree with you about that, but you know more about yeah. it than I do. So, I mean, I look at the people who are still ostensibly regarded as respectable politicians or, or public figures, and... Um, if they had not had a platform, if they had not been treated with respect. So, yeah, maybe, I mean, I don't know enough about YouTube, but you certainly wouldn't be inviting them onto mainstream television shows or, or, or giving them newspaper columns or radio programs or jobs in politics. But, I mean, that talk about locking the stable door after the horse has bolted. Emily, thank you so much. I, I really am very much the pupil today. Yeah, what a conversation, eh? And I don't think today is one of the days where I have to apologise for my lack of knowledge. Uh, it, it, it seems almost as if you feel a bit like the, what is it, the Lost Boys with the two Corys, you know, Heyman Feldman when they're going after the vampires. You, 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 you kind of almost have to be in the zone or having been in the zone to understand how you get people out of the zone but the footage of michael gove yesterday being accosted by people accusing him of protecting pedophiles now makes more sense to me at 20 minutes after 11 on wednesday than it did at 10 o'clock and i hope i can say the same for you even more powerfully i think and and gratifyingly we, we are it would seem in some corners of the country at helping shine a light into the darkest places and i obviously couldn't do that with you without you um but i still I mean, I could continue to ask, how, how do you get out of it, is the question that I asked, not necessarily expecting anyone to be ready to answer it. So huge thanks to Mike and and to Emily for stepping up. That that invitation remains in place. We can't really understand how you get out of it without understanding how you get into it. But the idea that coronavirus is a hoax, that the vaccine is uh, designed to do bad, not to do good, and that it is all part of a, a, a plot to protect satanic paedophiles doesn't sound as completely bonkers as it used to sound and and i i know that you know if you've been listening this morning what i mean by that um andrew takes it further and and again with historical justification it's anti-semitism james not solely but fundamentally although it may seem when it appears just to be zany conspiracism it's as old as the hills um and this is the uh the, the, one of the uh, the lies that was at the heart of of Nazism, the blood libel or the ritual murder libel, the idea that Jews killed children for their blood, that's what they're now accusing Hillary Clinton of, uh, is an anti-Semitic canard which falsely accuses Jews of murdering Christian children in order to use their blood. So the root is anti-Semitic. If you, if you believe that Hillary Clinton is doing this today, then that's not per se anti-Semitic, but it has its roots in the so-called blood libel or the ritual Murder libel. So the earliest caller of all, I think, 
Drew, who I gave quite short shrift to, but I did so politely, talking about this being as old as the hills and this being ancient. I, I, mean, he, I mean, he did have a point, but in understanding how it happens in the 21st century, it, 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 we needed a little bit more first-hand testimony. I did, anyway. A uh, couple of phone lines open, if you think you can add something to the conversation that we haven't had uh, uh, already, and the number you need, as ever, is 03456060973. David's in Cambridge. David, what would you like to say? Uh, morning, James. Hello, uh, thanks for speaking to me. Um, I'm not sure I can uh, add as much as uh, as Mike and Emily, your previous well, callers. Nor can I, so don't feel bad. <laughs> they've clearly been there, seen it and done it. But uh, um, my brother has been in this for a long time. Um, and I, I, for, to my mind, I, I mean, I, I, I vicariously kind of understand some of what it is by yeah. him, really. But not, not that I ever want to go there, because I find the whole thing completely chaotic and nutty. But well, When you, know, you say they, a long they, time, how long? Well, I remember him talking 25 years or more ago about David Icke and, okay. you know, we should follow him and he makes a lot of sense. And, right. you know, he even mentioned him to me the other week saying, you know, I told you David Icke was right all that time ago. <laughs> you know, he, he's, <laughs> he's been saying this for years. Okay. And, uh, and, and, it, and it kind of started there. Then you had the World Trade Center and the whole kind of conspiracy that the U.S. government had bombed its own people for, you know, to create a, 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 a premise for a war or this and that. And... You know, now we get to the current times where, you know, ivermectin is, is absolutely fine. It's a perfectly good drug, but they don't want to use it because it's part of the conspiracy to cover up a drug that actually create that helps something that doesn't exist, which always confuses my mind. That's a great um, point. So, so the, 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 and, and it does have some applications for humans, actually, and the, and the, dos yeah. but the dosages need to be very carefully handled. And, and they will be researching into whether or not it has efficacious in areas not 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 currently known but the idea that it's simultaneously a hoax but there's mm. also a drug that cures it that they're not telling you about i hadn't spotted that yeah. before yeah it, it's it, the whole thing is there's just a massive contradiction all the time and wherever you say anything they will flip it back well, well this and, is and the bit this is this is the bit that fascinates me the most because I, I you know I've, I've done my bit when it comes to pulling apart other nonsenses and other lies and the way to do it and I, I probably shouldn't tell you this, David, because this is my livelihood that I'm about to, uh, I'm about to unveil. The way to do it is to refuse to move from one question mm -hmm. until they answer mm -hmm. it. To actually keep saying, you know, in the context of Brexit, which some people won't like me bringing into this conversation, but sadly it works. You just keep saying, well, mm -hmm. which which law is it? You don't. Mm -hmm. Which law is it? You don't. You just keep with the one question, and that's the bit that I haven't been able to do with these people because they don't ring in or they they will then say something well you haven't read the mm. treat the treaties on ivermectin from 1633 which clearly and i just can't go there because yeah i haven't well, i get all the time i get emails constantly from him about dr so-and-so here's his paper professor such and such here's the research that they don't want to publish these people are frontline medics that are telling you the truth but then we get the whole Alex Jones, Steve Bannon, Q drops. All of this all feeds into the whole kind of thing. But the way I see it is, is in the, the the impression I get, um, certainly from him and certainly the, the, from what I hear from others, it's like the Matrix. They've taken the correct pill. They've seen the real world. And we're all the sheep who are still following the old way that's just completely... And, and I mean, with. what's depressing about your testimony is that you're brother thinks he's actually being vindicated by current events as opposed to yes. thinking yeah. uh oh have i ended up doing this then mm. yeah the whole thing it, and again i get the george soros the bill gates thing which i've i've said to him many times do you not think that they're just these are anti-semitic tropes of the jewish apparently yeah. having all the wealth and manipulating the rest of the world and and then we get into Bundaberg and we go down Bilder, the whole Bilder, thing. Bilder, and, Bilderberg, and, not that I mean, that, which is a real thing that, that doesn't do no, anything but, like no, what but, they say it does. No, but it's a conspiracy where the hierarchy get together and then work out the next stage of the plan and the is new world frightened? order. Is he frightened, your brother? Was he frightened of something at the beginning of this? No, or, no, no. He, he thinks he's seen the light, so there's nothing to be frightened of. We should be the ones that are frightened because we're still hoodwinked. We don't get it. Like the vaccine, for instance, is a population control drug. He right. won't have it, obviously. Um, he's now, he, my mum's in, in her 80s, and yeah. he's uh, convinced her not to have it as well. Oh, because no. The, 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 we have three years to live as a result of having the vaccine. because We, we all do. All so everyone who's had the vaccine is going to drop dead in three years? In, in roughly three years. And, this is and what happens when we don't? Does well, he move well, on well, to something else? Well, well, exactly. But it's it's like the, the sandwich board man with the end of the world is nigh kind of thing. And, yeah. and the way I see it is that 
he says the, the plan will be that because Bill Gates was involved in the development of the mRNA, mRNA and so on and so on, that the, this will free up the planet because that's the intended plan, that they will eradicate 80% of the world's population by us all having had a vaccine that we die from. I mean, it goes on and on and on. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, and you can laugh and you keep up communications with him. And I don't want to, well, I, I mean, vaguely. up to up to a point, but I, I mean, the, the the persuading your mum not to get vaccinated, that's not funny. Well, she's very much into it now. He's convinced her and, and you know, I mean, she says to me that, you know, your brother has access to information that you will never have. Because oh, my it's, days. And where does he get it from? Well, online. <laughs> But it's, you know, there's forums, they evangelize all of this to one another. So it just keeps reinforcing the whole nonsense. And he's not an inherently dangerous individual, but I do he wonder kind, whether... He kind of is. Makes, he kind of is. Well, yeah, from a, from, a, from a verbal perspective. But I wonder one day whether this will drive him to do something physically dangerous or stupid. Um, you know, he's been, a, he's been escorted from national supermarkets for refusing to wear a mask and had security escort him off the premises because he'll stand there and say people fought wars for my human rights and my right is not to wear a, a muzzle. We shall, this, we shall I, not be moved. Like, like, so could yeah. he conceivably have been in that mob going after Gove yesterday? Well, you know, that, yes, if, if it was in the right place at the right time and it was, it was convenient, I'm sure that they, you know, they could easily be persuaded. That's the thing that does concern So me. when I said fear and you said he's not frightened of anything, he thinks he's right, is he not frightened mm. in a sense of being killed off by a vaccine? Or is uh, that the wrong mm, word to use? Yeah, but yeah I mean, they, 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 there's kind of an invincibility about them because they've seen the light. And that's the problem that, you know, he says we're sheep. Well, I say well, it's well, religion. It's like Wayne said. You're, you're, it's a religion yeah, you're yeah. describing. With with. Yeah, it, I mean, didn't David Icke claim to be the Messiah at one point on Wogan yeah. wearing a purple tracksuit? Exactly. So you know that it, the whole thing fits around an organised kind of cult, really. And this is the thing, cool. David, isn't it? Which you've got a much. You're much closer to this than I am. It it it, it is now in a tr- troublingly high above the parapet which is why we're talking about it. I wouldn't have talked about it a year ago. I'd have thought, you know, we shouldn't really get... And I certainly won't invite people who are trying to persuade me that they're right onto the programme because, I, the same reason, I wouldn't imp- invite flat earthers or, or, or people claiming the moon is made of cheese onto the programme. But mm. but it is... It, it, it kind of... It's always there bubbling under. And then in times of crisis, mm. it, it gets through. It seeps through holes that it normally can't get through. Mm. And there's a lot of nastiness to it. There's yeah, of a, course a there lot is. of the, you know, people dying in hospitals and, you know, other actors, it's it's fake news and all this kind of stuff. It's but there's fun, no yeah. evidence. It's no, just, no, of course there isn't not... any evidence. So yeah, David, thank you, mate. That's so helpful. And I'm sorry for, I mean I hope you can find some way of helping your mum for, for, for the most obvious of reasons. But if you think about how Trump and, and to a lesser extent Brexit, or at least the immigration side of Brexit, was built upon a refugee crisis coupled with an economic crisis, it allowed some profoundly unpleasant people to move front and centre to become very, very prominent. I don't need to tell you who. Um, although I gather some of the names involved are becoming considerably less popular according to the, the records of birth in this country. But if you take people who are prepared to uh, scaremonger and lie about refugee crises and economic crises and, and, and then you get people to do really silly things, this is just the same as that. This is a massive medical crisis which opens up room for really dangerous liars to use it to boost themselves. It's interesting when, when you look at some of the people in the public space, people whose names were known before coronavirus, very often they've been associated with other, quotes causes, end quotes, before. And they've become a little bit addicted, perhaps, to the, I don't know what you would call it, to the adrenaline of, uh, it's not infamy, because the causes might have been positive, but you're so desperate to find something to replace the last cause that you end up jumping on bandwagons like this. And the next thing you know, you're, you're, you're boosting these sort of uh, characters and, and claiming that Donald Trump won the election. I, I suppose I should tell you, we mentioned Trump a few times today, that he is refusing. Indeed, he's trying to sue uh, in order to avoid revealing uh, what went on with regards to his relationships with that January the 6th insurrection. That I think it, we could probably now call it an attempted coup without fear of contradiction and Steve Bannon Trump's chief strategist in the early days of his presidency is also refusing to comply with a subpoena to testify about that riot where Trump supporters stormed the Capitol in an attempt to prevent Congress confirming Joe Biden's election victory Trump's ordered all of his aides and allies not to work with the committee and has taken legal action to
to prevent it seizing his own administration's records. Um, Steve Bannon refusing to cooperate could face a year in jail if convicted. But, you know, was it 31 when Hitler launched a coup and, and didn't face any real consequences for it? That went well. The number of people who uh, are encountering in their daily life, uh, previously ordinary individuals who believe that Trump's election was stolen, that Biden is racked with dementia, that masks don't work, that the vaccines are here for the government to control us, is, I wouldn't say necessarily terrifying, but it's certainly alarming. And it is exactly why people like Michael Gove, and much less importantly, little old me, end up getting accosted in the street by people accusing us of protecting paedophiles. It's quite, quite remarkable. But I'm so proud of today's programme because I think everybody listening will now understand it a bit better than they did before. Um, Theo will be with us after uh, 45 to tee up PMQs coming up at 12. The, um, I mean, I suppose the invitation before then is to call in and tell us something that hasn't already been covered that you feel should be covered or add to some of the conversation that we've already had. I think I now could answer the question. I certainly could. I couldn't go on Mastermind yet, but I I think I could answer the question of of what do they believe. But Wayne's point about religion, and I bridle at that, given my background, you see. I I mean, very much a, a, a Catholic kid, very much raised a Catholic, Catholic schools, Christian schools. And, and the idea that these pe- what these people believe is just the same, you see that out there a lot. I remember getting um, a, a, a letter off what you might call a very modern religion, a religion that was started in the 20th century, complaining that I had described them as not being a proper religion. And at the time, gosh, it's confession hour, isn't it? At the time, I... Uh, I, I thought that was hilarious. Yeah, I've had a le- come over here, lads. Look, I've had a letter off the bleep, and they're complaining because I said they're not a proper religion. Right, it breaks my heart to say this. It challenges the very core of me. But if I had to provide an entirely evidence-based intellectual account of why bleep is not a proper religion and Catholicism is, I couldn't do it. Which is where faith comes in, and why faith is taught to us to be so important. But you can no more prove what you believe as a as a devout. Christian, then you can prove. Then these lot can prove what they believe about Hillary Clinton drinking the blood of children. So I think that's why the condescension that creeps in is perhaps unhelpful because the the thought processes what has happened to the minds of these men and women is not that remarkable or that extraordinary, and it's certainly not that new. 11.39 is the time. Sarah is in Norwich. Sarah, what can you tell us? Um, hi, James. Hello. It's really lovely to speak to you. It's my first time, so be <laughs> gentle. Of course I will. Welcome. Um, you, um, we have very different opinions on a lot of things, but I listen to you every day. Okay. Um, I was saying to your researcher, <clears throat> you do um, talk about people who haven't had a vaccine. You know, you're not very nice about them. A lot of the time, but oh, I am. I, I didn't hear. Really... You didn't hear. I am enormously sympathetic to to, to the well, forces that have preyed upon your innocence yeah. and naivety. It's it's really tough because um, I basically was um, the same as Matt and Emily beforehand. Um, I had a Facebook friend that was sharing these conspiracies, and I maybe liked a few of the posts and sort of read into it a little bit. Um, he then reached out to me personally and recommended a Facebook group yeah. and I joined and, you know, it's the start of lockdown and I must admit, I just, I was completely sold and frighteningly so, you know, and every day, yeah. you know, something new would come up and I'd be like, oh my God, Oprah Winfrey's in on it and you wouldn't, you know, but then as it progressed, yeah. These different stories, you know, Wayfair, Jeffrey Epstein, things like that, Tom Hanks, you know, um, you know, we've obviously covered all that. But the, the, what I've left, I'm left with is this, re- I'm so worried about having this vaccine. I haven't had it. Okay. And I, I'm 40 years old. I'm a single parent and I've actually just had coronavirus. And yeah. I was, you know, I've... I've done my research. Um, what, I was saying to you... I don't want to be mean. <clears throat> what does that mean? You've done your research. So basically looked at the stats, the ONS okay. stats, 
um, who's who's becoming seriously ill, who's dying from it. Yeah. And Oxford University have got a calculator on their website where you can put in your details and they will give you statistically what um, your chances are having serious complications or dying from coronavirus. Does it include long COVID? So, um, no, it doesn't. Does it include being the person in whom uh, a new variant will emerge? Because the higher number of new cases we have, the higher the likelihood of a new variant? No, this is okay. this is basically based on but, but me catching But take, take on board what I just do. Take on board yeah, what I, I just said because there are you know, sixty million people in this country, and the vaccine <laughs> is designed to help all of them. So yeah, so I, I I'm not anti-vax now. At the point, okay. at one point I was like everyone, but now I believe that I'm pro-choice. So I think everyone should have their own, make their own, be able to make their own decision. Um, what about seatbelts? Drink driving. Well, exactly. And this but is should everyone thing. be this able to what... make... Should, and I'm not badgering you. I'm just doing no, what no, I no. have to do because otherwise, you know, the rabbit moves out of the headlights, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Do, do, should everybody be able to... You. Should No. Should everybody be able to make their own decisions about drink driving? No. Wearing seatbelts in cars? But they do. But they do, James. Yeah, but should they be? Ella? People you're, do. But you're not in favour of that. No, I'm not. But, but you are in favour of that in the context of vaccines designed to protect every single person in the country. Yeah. Okay. But my point is, is that yeah. I'm, I'm because of like being down this rabbit hole, and like I said, I, I'm now I'm not against everyone having the vaccine, but I'm scared to have it because once I've had it, I can't not undo that. I understand, but the people, I mean, and except that, I mean, waning is, is now one of the major worries, is that the people who have had it are going to need boosters because it wanes, like like almost all vaccines do. I know, but that doesn't help the cause. That makes it worse. Because well, it, only, because you're like still, me, only because you're still listening to the people who told you that Oprah Winfrey was in on it. Well, no, I'm out of that group now. I'm, I'm but this is where, But this group. is where the, what you're saying now still comes from that source, from those sources. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. There's still that mistrust. And like um, Emily had said, you know, we know the government lie. And they want to bring why, why would the doctors lie? <clears throat> well, I don't know. Well, let's have, let's know, have a little think, it let's have a think about it together. So let's say 95, I mean, we're getting back to Brexit, aren't we? In the, mm. uh, no, climate change. 97% of, of scientists, 98% say climate change is real. And yet some people chose to believe the 2% that have now been proved tragically and, and horribly wrong. Why would almost every doctor in the country be in favour of vaccines if they were dangerous, do you think? Yeah, but then you hear these vaccines. No, but these, let's these just pause. That aren't, no, I know, that but that's why I said almost. And they're not being allowed to say. They are, because otherwise that's, you wouldn't that's have heard what them. I'm getting that, no. You yeah. wouldn't know, if they weren't allowed to say what they want to say, you would never know they existed. So they are allowed to say it. But let's just focus on that question again. Why would yeah. almost every doctor in the country be persuaded that vaccines are a good thing, that these vaccines are a good thing, if they're not? Mm. Why do you think? Let's come, I, up, let's come up with a theory. My, yeah, no, don't tell I, me what else you look at. Let's come yeah. up with a theory on that, if we can, together. So yeah. why, why, if they're not I, good... I can't. No. Well, should we try a tiny bit hard? Yeah. What would it be? I mean, are they getting paid? Secretly? No. Secretly paid? Do they want their patients to die? They became doctors because they actually secretly wanted to hurt and harm people rather than help and heal people? Mm. But then the, the doctors right. themselves... The doctors themselves, we were told at the beginning it was vulnerable and the elderly, and then they changed. Then they said, "Oh no, now it's middle-aged people." So what and now was what, what, what was so that pe what people were at risk? Okay, you know, this is at but the there's, very there's gradations of risk. And then they, so, yeah, so so but, so it's still the case that the vulnerable and the elderly are at most risk. Yeah, but but younger people are at risk too. So if you walk into a road that's got a hundred cars driving up it, okay, yeah you're at risk. If you walk yeah. into a road that's got two cars driving up it, you're also at risk. But you're mm. at much greater risk in the middle of the road with 100 cars on it. That's all. The doctors haven't changed yeah. their advice at all. The people who told yeah. you Oprah Winfrey is in on it are the same people that are feeding you these lines now. Yeah. Aren't they? Well, uh, yeah, but the, well, the one, the, what okay. I can't, what I'm struggling with is that one of the big conspiracies was about these passports. I know you must think I'm mental. I I'm, don't think you're mental, honestly, Sarah. I've heard I'm, the people, I'm, I'm I've really read the people. I know and, you are. I know it's shining and, through. <laughs> you, you are, I, I have absolute, I, I, I want to help you, but I, I swear to you, I don't think anything ill of you. 
I swear no, by all I hold I, dear. Honestly, what I'm wondering is, yes. why isn't... I, to me, I'm questioning this. This is, keeps me up at night. I am constantly tormented yes. with making a decision, making the right decision. I take this super seriously. I'm not just someone like, I'm not having that vaccine. No, I'm I understand. Just, you know, this is scary stuff. Uh, but, um, you know, it's this torments me and keeps me up at night. Yes. Um, you know, worrying know. about it and making know. a decision. And so when I look at the stats and think, well, my, my statistically, I'm 99.97% chance that I'm not going to die of it. Yeah, but well, you could have a terrible time. Even yeah, if you don't die, a, you I'm could get long it. COVID. Theo yeah. Osherwood is here. Theo, could you come into the studio a moment, please? Uh-huh. Just, just, just bear with us, Sarah, okay? Yeah. Because this is really um, important. You know Theo, don't you? I, well, so not think, personally, think but Theo is I, LBC's, I politi- uh, LBC's yes, political yeah. editor yeah. And, and a very close friend of mine. Yeah. So, someone that I thought briefly at the very beginning of this nightmare, I thought we might lose him. And I, and I was in contact with his family and I, I nearly lost it a couple of occasions on air. And I just want yeah. you to listen to Theo, who's, I mean, this is going to sound <clears> a bit <throat> stupid, Sarah, but promise me you won't mm-hmm. laugh. Theo's no. not, not dead, right? I'm here. He, he, he is here and he's in the studio. And I just want you to tell yeah. Sarah what you told me a while ago about yeah. having had COVID and, and, and what and how it's changed the way you look at life and the world. Sarah, just just, just listen to Theo so, for a So minute. I take it from yeah. Sarah. So I've just literally walked into the She doesn't want to get vaccinated. She doesn't she, want to get vaccinated. She's, because she's, done, she's seen the stuff that tells her she's very, very unlikely to die of it. So she doesn't think she needs to get, or oh, she should well, get well, vaccinated. Well, uh, Sarah, I, 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 I'd, I'd ask you to perhaps reconsider that opinion because I'd never thought that I would... Um, uh, COVID how would get how me. old are you? I'm 30. I was 38 when I got COVID. And how fit are you? Uh, I could I run marathons. Uh, I could run 10k. How much do you weigh? 50. Uh, I weigh just uh, 80 kilos. He's too modest to tell you this, Sarah, but he's a hunk. Okay. I'm not. Okay. I'm a bit. He is a hunk. And so, what happened to you when you got COVID? So I got COVID, and um, and it nearly cost me my life, Sarah. So I'd I'd really I'd, I'd implore you to get the vaccine. And I'd yeah. never thought that I would. I'd never thought that I would get as ill as i did but uh, no. honestly when you have when you sit in a hospital bed or lie in a hospital bed as i was <coughs> and, and you've got oxygen going into your nose and and and, and you it, it's quite it takes um it, it's it's really scary and especially i don't know sarah if you've got children or you've got yeah. people who love you and they really care about yeah. you and you yeah, really love them and care about them yeah and, and, and worried sick of course that i haven't uh, had the vaccine they've uh, all had it and, and I haven't. Okay. Yeah, and I just um, and you and you're there, and, and I wish I'd had the vaccine then, but of course it didn't exist. But you're there, and you're contemplating, you're contemplating your life, and and yeah. I and and you know I was on the, I mean I wasn't speaking to my mum, she was speaking to me, and she was updating because you me, couldn't speak. I couldn't speak. So and well I. I, my mum was on the phone actually, and she was she 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 was in touch, and she said that she'd had to move her Pilates class to Zoom. She's seventy <laughs> years old, and, and she was trying to she was brave and trying to do it, tell, tell me, and 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 I was just you know I just spluttered down the phone to her in a very croaky voice, well barely able to speak. I didn't want to die, and and, and to not have to go through that. And you've got mm. the choice to get this vaccine. I, I'm not. There's no silver bullet to it, is there? But sure. but, but to not have to do that, I, I'd um. I, I'd, I'd and give what you was everything. that thing you said to me about what you would? You were about to go there. Then I think. What, what I mean. What would you swap now? To everything. S- everything. Not to have had to have done that. To go back and to, never catch COVID. In, you'd give up. Absolutely not. To 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 the the last thing that the impact. And of course, I've had some great care and support and and things to get myself. <laughs> back on my feet and I'm, I'm you know 99.9 percent there now um but but not to have done that 15 18 months afterwards uh, mm. it, it would have been I, I, yeah absolutely mm. i just not well, to have gone through that and you can you could just lit, you could pop down to your gp surgery and i get the sort of i I almost get the hesitancy because you're sitting there and I don't want to be sort of one of those people who says, oh, you've got to get the vaccine because you've just got to get the vaccine. I understand the hesitancy of people yeah. and you're worried about the after, you know, there's any any side effects potentially. You feel rubbish for yeah. a couple of weeks potentially. You get, you've got a sore arm, you're worried about you feeling a bit down. And, and of course people, you know, 
there's no evidence, of course, to suggest that you get you, you there's, there's lasting impacts or whatever. But people have obviously made things of it on those Doris's Facebook page or whatever. But, of the vaccine. Of the vaccine. There will know, be some negative reactions, but, but nowhere but, near as many. And and Sarah, the final thing. But, 72.8% of people in this country have had one dose. If if there were real problems with it, we'd really know but about then, it. Yeah, the problem is is that they then move the goalposts. It's like, oh, have the vaccine. It's like, oh, but you're going to need another vaccine. And then it's, oh, and then yeah, you're going to need another vaccine. Listen to the scientists. And now we're going to bring you the passport. Yeah, OK. And... Listen to the scientists explain why that's necessary. Listen to the scientists explain it. Listen to the people that have worked in their whole lives inside virology. Do not listen to people on Facebook or, or, or even, you know, no, people I'm not on the on radio. That. I haven't been on that a All long right. time. Well, and I, I can't listen to you yeah. every day, you know, and you do keep me... Thinking, you know, thinking. on the straight and narrow. Yeah, and I think about it all the time, but, you know, I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared to have all right. it. Well, listen what? listen back to, to this when, when we drop the podcast later. Listen back to what Theo has told you, because when he was in hospital, I was terrified for him. Why, why, would you, why are you scared, Sarah, can I ask? Genu- honestly, honest, um, genuine question. Why are you scared? Because, because there hasn't, I don't feel like there's been enough medical research. I mean, I've heard that they've even changed the definition of vaccine. Where did you hear vaccine. that? Where? Where did you hear that? Because, to suit, because but it's not a But that's the people that told you Oprah Winfrey was in on it. It's the people who tell you Donald Trump won the election or Joe Biden's got dementia. All, all of these people, they're the same people, Sarah. That's mm. all. So, I, listen, go with our love, won't you? Yeah. And then think about two constituencies of people. Think about the scientists who do this for a living yeah. and always have. And then think about the people who love you most in the world and what they're saying to you. And, yeah, then, and, then, and, then, and then work out who has your best interests at heart. And can I just ask you that, please? I know you say about these COVID idiots and stuff like that. I We're don't not really, not like anymore. That. No, We're well, not, I know you're not. You're you're you're, you know. you're you're a warm and thoughtful person who has been led into dark <laughs> and dangerous places. Contempt for the con men, compassion for the con. Always on this program, yeah. sir. Always. Okay. You take All care. Right, well, yeah? It's nice speaking to you. Yeah, it was cheers, nice speaking thanks, to you. What? Well, not a bad debut that for a first time caller, eh? <laughs> covered a lot of ground I think there's a, we've broken a few firsts there um, and it's made me very late for the break but Sarah do, do keep in touch and do let us know if there's anything else we can do to help